The Lord be with you. Welcome to our video. This is for Sunday, July 25th, which is proper 12 on the church calendar. This service is coming from Zion Lutheran Church in Pine City, Minnesota. I'm Pastor Kleppe. To lead us in worship, we'll be using Divine Service, setting one from the Lutheran Service Book. It's on page 151, if you have a copy to follow along. We'll be singing three hymns, hymn 795, hymn 686, and hymn 702. We begin with the hymn. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We, we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. May the Lord, who has begun this good work in us, bring it to completion in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. 
In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Give thanks to the God of gods, for his steadfast love endures forever. 
Give thanks to the Lord of lords, for his steadfast love endures forever. To him alone, who, who alone does great wonders, for his steadfast love endures forever. To him who by understanding made the heavens, for his steadfast love endures forever. To him who spread out the earth above the waters, for his steadfast love endures forever. To him who made the great lights, for his steadfast love endures forever. The sun to rule over the day, for his steadfast love endures forever. The moon and the stars to rule over the night, for his steadfast love endures forever. Our epistle lesson from Ephesians chapter 3, where Paul writes this. For this reason, I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named, that according to the riches of his glory, he may grant you to be strengthened with power through his Spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may have strength to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all that we ask or think, according to the power at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus, throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Spirit. Amen. The text for our consideration today is our epistle lesson from Ephesians chapter 3, where Paul tells us that through Christ we are strengthened and filled. This is our text. There's an old saying, you are what you eat. Of course, that doesn't mean that you're sweet because you eat candy, or that you're a turkey if you eat turkey, or that you're a pig if you eat pork. Although I do know a few turkeys who eat turkey, and most people I would categorize as pigs eat a fair amount of pork, but never mind that. What it really means is that you'll tend to be healthier if you eat good food and that you'll be less healthy if you eat junk. Fair enough. Physically, scientifically, what you are filled with can affect your health. When my mom fell a few years ago, she ended up with a large wound that took several months to heal. The doctors told her to eat lots of protein, protein shakes, red meat, and so forth. Protein would speed up the healing. It's good for building muscle. If you have high blood pressure, eat some bananas. They're good for potassium. If you're going to run a race, spaghetti will load you with carbs and increase your endurance. What you eat can affect your health, but also your intellect, your energy level, even your emotions. You are what you eat isn't just a clever saying. It's a fact. Spiritually, what you eat can affect your health as well. Okay, what you are filled with. God is constantly filling us with himself, blessing us by giving himself to us. As Christians, right from the beginning of our Christian walk, we are filled with the fullness of God. We are filled when we are washed in the water of baptism. As Paul wrote to the young pastor Titus, God saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewal of the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us richly through Jesus Christ, our Savior. In baptism, God doesn't just give us his Holy Spirit. He pours out the Spirit on us generously. He fills us with the Spirit, with forgiveness and life. We are filled with the Word of God. There's a liturgy in our hymnal called the Service of Prayer and Preaching. We've used it for some of these videos, although not today. It's a nice short order of service, but it includes some great prayers. One of my favorites is a prayer that we call the Collect for the Word. Here's how it goes. Blessed Lord, you caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning. Grant that we may so hear them, read, mark, learn, and take them to heart, that by the patience and comfort of your holy word, we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life. Do you think of the word that way? Do you think about taking the word to heart? In some older versions of our Lutheran hymnal, that phrase used to be a little more descriptive. It said, Inwardly digest, inwardly digest the Word of God. Take the Word in, be filled with it, make it a part of you, let it change you. God doesn't just give you His Word, He fills you with it. And then, of course, there's the sacrament of the altar in which we actually eat the body and blood of our Savior. In the sacrament, we receive forgiveness and life in abundance. We are made one with God and each other. And we are filled with the presence of God, which strengthens our faith for service to him in the days and months and years to come. In the sacrament, God fills you with his goodness. He tells us to do that often. That's how good it is for us. Like protein does for the body, when we are filled with the fullness of God, we are strengthened through his spirit. 
And what is the result of this strengthening? What are we able to do that others aren't? First, we are assured that Christ will dwell in our hearts through faith. The presence of God is a challenging thing for our small minds to comprehend. God is present everywhere. You can't get away from him, even though sometimes you might want to. Yet he promises us his special presence when we gather in his name or hear his word or receive the sacrament. Of course, the greatest presence of God that we can experience is when Christ comes to dwell in our hearts by faith. He is there to unite us, to strengthen the relationship we have with him, to increase our knowledge of him, to give us comfort and peace, as only he can give. There is no greater thing for the Christian than, than knowing that Jesus is always present with you, blessing you every day. Second, we are rooted and grounded in love. God is love. The more we are filled with him, the more we are filled with love. When Christ takes over your heart, you are rooted in love. Love becomes the very ground on which you stand. When filled with God, you become rooted and grounded in love. And filled with God, we may have the strength to comprehend the magnitude of God's love. The world looks at the sacrifice of Jesus and think of God as barbaric even cruel, but as his children, filled with him and with the knowledge of him, we can begin to understand that all that Jesus did was because of his great love for us. We can start to know, as did the saints before us, how broad and high and deep and wide is the love of God. But most importantly, we have a sense of the powerful love of God that surpasses our knowledge. It is a privilege and joy of the Christian to be filled with the love of God because it is the work of God. His love is not our doing. God himself fills us, strengthens us to seek him more. It becomes circular for us. The more we receive the goodness of God, the more time we spend in worship and the word, the more we are filled, the more we receive, and so on. Because the fact is, in everything, God does far more abundantly than all that we ask or think. He fills us physically with good things. He fills us spiritually with his spirit, love, forgiveness, and eternal life. His power is at work within us. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and all people according to their needs. Great are you, O Lord, and greatly to be praised. You rule the earth and sea and sky. We give you thanks for the blessings of creation and life that come from your abundant goodness. Give to your church boldness to speak of your awesome deeds and sing always of your righteousness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, you are able to do far more abundantly than all that we ask or think. Be glorified in your church and in Christ Jesus. Ground us in love. Give us a faith rooted in the promises of Christ 
and give us strength to comprehend with all the saints his love that surpasses all knowledge. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named, as you preserved Noah and his family and brought forth new life from the ark under the promise of your covenant, bless now our families also. Make marriages strong and fruitful according to your will. Let your word rule in every home, uniting its members in forgiveness and causing your son to dwell in every heart through faith. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of might, spare us and future generations from wickedness. Give blessing to our nation and its leaders to rule according to your good pleasure. Protect the members of our armed forces, police, and other public servants. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, through your Son and his reconciling death, we receive all good gifts, healing, and sustenance. We bring before you the sick and those in need in our hearts now. Give them healing and protection and encourage them in the midst of this life by the recognition of your fatherly providence known in Christ our Savior. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All these things and whatever else you know that we need, grant us, Father, for the sake of him who died and rose again and now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace.
Once again, I want to thank you for joining us here at Zion in Pine City, Minnesota. I'm Pastor Kleppe. Our phone number here is 320-629-3683. Our website is zionpinecity.org. And our email address is zionpinecity at gmail.com. Please feel free to contact us about anything you'd like. We are having services in person here on Sunday mornings at 9 o'clock uh, with communion. We uh, also are having a Sunday evening Bible study, and I've talked about that several times. I'd like to point out to you that we're going to take two Sundays off because I'm going to be doing a little bit of traveling. But uh, Sunday, July 25th and Sunday, August 1st, there will be no Sunday evening Bible study, so please uh, don't come at those times. Uh, but every other Sunday night in the foreseeable future, uh, we will have our study on uh, unchanging truth in changing times. May God bless your week. Mm -hmm.